Uh, one of my favorites. <laughs> Look at this. Look at her. Oh my gosh. So let me uh, let me bring her down really quick so that you can see a better view of her. Oh, she just fell. Nope, she's flying. She's flying. I like rarely see these guys fly, but this is Aurilus Cristatus, which is a wheel bug. What's up guys, my name is Kelvin Wiley and welcome to my YouTube channel. So I'm sure you already read the title of today's video. It is titled The Assassin Bug Myth. I'll get into what that means later on in the video. I'm sure that you may have some thoughts in your head as to what that may pertain to, but trust me, I will get into that later on. So without further ado, let's just get right into the video. So I had this video in my head for a while now. Uh, I just didn't know when to make it. Really, when I caught this wheel bug earlier that you saw at the intro, um, I was like, you know what? I think I'm gonna record this video, the one that I had in my head for some time now. So that's what I have decided to do. So a common theme happens every time that I post any species of assassin bug, whether it's on my Instagram, YouTube, or on my TikTok, I always receive comments saying that, you know, I will get Chagas disease or, you know, why are you letting it bite you? You're gonna get Chagas. I will just post, I don't know, a few of the <laughs> comments that I get about Chagas disease on my post. So here you can see them right now. So as you just saw, I receive a hefty amount of comments referring to Shogs disease on all of my posts uh, regarding assassin bugs. Now I didn't blur out their names because my all of my social media is public, it's not private, so if anyone were to go on any of those posts um, you know, on assassin bugs, you will clearly see the comments, so I didn't really feel the need to blur their names out. So. Sorry if you were one of them. This isn't to shame you or anything about, you know, leaving a comment about Chagas disease. This is just to bring attention and awareness and really kind of to educate and to inform. This is why I'm making this video um, as to what Chagas disease is. So yeah, like I said, I'll explain that later on. So what is an assassin bug exactly? I could just give you the easy straight to the point forward answer on what an assassin bug is but I am not going to do that. So looking at it from a whole, the class Insecta, which contains insects, has over 20 different orders of insects, 29 to be exact. Some of these orders include Diptera, which contains flies, Odonata, which contains dragonflies, Hymenoptera, which contains ants, bees, wasps, and sawflies. You have Coleoptera, which contains beetles. You have um, Phasmatodia, which contains leaf insects and stick insects. Mantodia contains mantises. Cole uh, no, I said that in order. <laughs> Blatodia, which contains cockroaches. And so on and so forth, 29. But within all of the different orders, you have this order, which is super diverse. Uh, super unique in my opinion, and that order is Hemiptera. And the order Hemiptera contains Hemipterans, or commonly referred to as true bugs. So what is a true bug? Well, a true bug, of course, is any insect within the order Hemiptera, but something that all true bugs share, regardless of you know, the genus that they're in, the family that they're in, regardless of any of that, all true bugs share a specialized mouth part called a rostrum. Now, what is a rostrum? Well, a rostrum is a beak-like mouth part that is found in all true bugs, like I just previously stated. And it, oops, there, she flew away. Hold on, let me go and grab her. All right, I got her. So as I was saying, a rostrum is a specialized beak-like mouth part that serves several functions depending on what the true bug or hemipterin is. So for example, aphids, uh, leaf 
footed bugs, stink bugs, uh, well, some stink bug species, uh, will use their rostrum to pierce plants and suck the juices out of them. Uh, other insects, such as giant water bugs, uh, water striders, water scorpions, so on and so forth, will use their rostrum in an offensive way where they actually pierce the exoskeletons of other insects to inject venom and to paralyze, liquefy their insides and to drink them out. So the rostrum as a whole is a beak-like piercing mouth part, uh, piercing sucking mouth part because all true bugs cannot chew. They drink their meals, whether it's from a plant or an, you know, um, an insect or another organism. Um, they all share that one thing in common. Now, assassin bugs, like I just stated, are within the order Hemiptera, but specifically, they are contained within the family known as Reduviidae. The family Reduviidae contains all species of assassin bugs. There are over 7,000 different species of assassin bugs within the family Reduviidae. So really quickly, I just wanted to share with you guys my brand new line of stickers that I have available for sale on my website. All of these are various animals that I drew on paper by hand, colored them in, and then converted them into high quality, long lasting, waterproof stickers. Just to give you a quick idea of what they look like up close, here's one of my favorite drawings that I drew of a European hornet. All of these drawings were achieved by using these markers to color them in. If you're interested in purchasing any of these stickers, you can head on over to my website, calvinwiley.net, or you can hit the link in my description, which will send you directly to my website for you to purchase them. Thank you so much to all of those in advance who end up getting one for supporting my small business. And now, back to the video. All right, now I'm gonna segue into really the main reason why I wanted to create this video. So let's get right into it. So all assassin bugs, like I just said, are within the family Reduviidae, but within the family Reduviidae, you have a subfamily known as Triatomini. Now the subfamily Triatomini contains assassin bug species that are commonly referred to as kissing bugs, cone nose bugs, or even Triatomini bugs. Now this specialty group of assassin bugs, which I'm going to be referring to as kissing bugs throughout the remainder of the video, are unique in the sense that they can actually contain a very deadly and life-threatening disease known as Chagas disease. Now, like I stated earlier, there's over 7,000 different species of assassin bugs, but believe it or not, there's only around 100 50 or so kissing bug species in the world. So they are a microcosm when you look at assassin bugs as a whole, but even still, they are a high level of concern for human beings. So kissing bugs use their rostrum in a bit of a different way than most other species of assassin bugs. Most other assassin bugs use their rostrum to pierce the exoskeletons of their prey, which they will then inject venom that both paralyzes and also liquefies the insides of their prey's body, which they will then drink out once it has been dissolved. Kissing bugs, on the other hand, use their rostrum to feed on the blood of animals and also people as well, which is where they get the nickname vampire bug from. Kissing bugs can be a huge problem if they come in contact with an animal that is infected with the parasite known as Trypanosoma cruzi. So if an animal is infected with the parasite Trypanosoma cruzi, that kissing bug will then, you know, feed on its blood, which it will then become transferred to the kissing bug and then the kissing bug is then affected. And so then what happens at night usually um, in countries like Mexico and it, other Latin American countries uh, in South America and in Central America as well, where Chagas disease is rampant, um, at night, uh, kissing bugs typically live in uh, like cracks and in the walls of homes, um, usually like straw and hut-like homes where they are nocturnal. So, you know, most people, for the most part, sleep during, you know, the night. Kissing bugs are active during that time since they are, like I said, nocturnal, which they will then come out 
and feed on the person while they are sleeping. Using their rostrum, the kissing bug will pierce the flesh of the person and will begin to drink their blood. What follows next is that the kissing bug will usually defecate. Yes, it will poop on the person's body and the parasite Trypanosoma cruzi will actually be in their feces. And what ends up happening, unfortunately, is that the parasite will then find itself uh, and will leach into the person's uh, eyes, their nose, their mouth, um, a cut or a scratch, or even, believe it or not, the bite that the kissing bug had just previously, previously left. So the kissing bug bites a person, it goes and poops, the parasites will leach out of the poop and will enter through the bite site that the kissing bug has left. And then that person ultimately gets infected with Chagas disease. Now that person who is infected with Chagas disease will experience just some of the following symptoms. These tend to be more mild symptoms. Symptoms can actually be more severe if it is left untreated, but just some of the mild symptoms include loss of appetite, headaches, fever, uh, diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, even the swelling of the eyelids, just to name a few. Now these symptoms, like I said, can become more severe. Uh, some of these include cardiac arrest, heart failure, and ultimately death. On estimate, around six to eight million people come in contact with Chagas disease every single year because of the kissing bug, and around 10 to 12,000 people ultimately die because of their symptoms being left untreated and just gradually getting more severe as time goes on. However, there are two medications usually prescribed to patients who have Chagas disease, and the two are benzodiazole and nifurtimox. These two uh, medications, if given early on in the first few stages of Chagas disease, has proved to be very effective and can actually cure it. But the sad thing is that most people don't even realize they have Chagas disease until later on, once the symptoms are you know, severe, and at that point it is um, pretty ineffective. So there, you know, like I said, there is hope, but most of the time people don't even realize until it's too late. So this is exactly why I wanted to create this video because a lot of people from my personal experience and what I have seen and heard is that when they come in contact with an assassin bug, they are immediately frightened and are um, very fearful because they might get Chagas disease. The truth of the matter is, like I stated, is that the vast majority of assassin bug species are not kissing bugs, so they are not within the family triatomini, so they are unable to come in contact with Chagas disease, become infected. Um, only kissing bugs, only assassin bugs within the subfamily triatomini are capable of being vectors of Chagas disease. All of the other vast majority of species of assassin bugs are unable, incapable of carrying and spreading this disease. You might have a question in your head and the question might be, how will I know if it's a kissing bug or just a regular species of assassin bug or not? And my answer to that would be, it can be kind of tricky, especially if you're someone who is not too well-versed or familiar with assassin bug species. Um, so, I mean, you could obviously identify it, try to go online and see, you know, uh, if you can ID or identify this particular species of assassin bug that you came in contact with. Um, or the best thing to do is to just leave it alone or if it's inside your house, just take it and, you know, transport it somewhere else um, if you are completely unsure. But when it comes to assassin bugs, such as the wheel bug and many of the others that are incapable of spreading Chagas disease, there is really nothing to worry about. Um, yes, they do have a painful bite, but that is if, you know, they feel trapped or if you are intentionally messing with it. This assassin bug, this wheel bug has been on my face for the majority of the video and has not shown any signs of wanting to hurt me. It has not bitten me. So they are completely fine if you just respect them and leave them be. So there's nothing to really fear about. Um, now, I have been bitten by this species of assassin bug. I actually have a YouTube video 
uh, that, you know, you can go and watch of me getting bitten by a wheel bug. I've been bitten by a wheel bug at least maybe four or five times in my lifetime. Um, nothing too serious. For the sake of this video, for you guys, you know, what the heck? What, what's one more time, you know? I'm, I'll, I'll let this wheel bug bite me, you know? Why not? <laughs> All right, let's get bitten for the fifth, I think, fifth or sixth time. I don't even know at this point. <laughs> I personally don't keep track of how many times I've been bitten or stung by a particular insect or other arthropod for that matter. Uh, it all just kind of blends together, so I don't know. But you can actually see on my arm uh, from previous bites and stings, um, some of these are from wheel bugs or just assassin bug species in general. Some are from giant water bugs. Um, yeah, it seems to like they, they leave like permanent scarring, as you can see. I'm sure that has something to do with their dissolving properties in their venom. It just kind of eats away at the tissues and doesn't heal back properly or, um, you know, consistent as other scratches and cuts. But um, yeah, so pretty interesting. All right, enough ranting. Let me just let this thing bite me. Uh, let me see. Let me pick a spot. How about right here? I'm gonna go right here. Come on, don't be bashful. Oh, you can see the venom right there, yep. So the venom leaking out. So yeah, she is biting me currently. And uh, don't do this at home, even though I've already let her bite me before I said that, but yeah, don't, don't do this. <laughs> Even though I know she's not a species of kissing bug, just still, you know, you might be allergic or whatever. So she bit me, well, this is now the third bite. All right, so I think that's about it. I mean, she just keeps going, but I think she, I think she's good. So as you can see, there is the infamous bite again, because I already had a video of a wheel bug biting me, but there you have it again, if you haven't seen the first one. So what's gonna happen now is within a few minutes, this is going to swell up into a red bubble uh, and then I will be able to pop that red bubble and blood will be um, gushing out from it. Not a lot, but it will puss up with blood that will be poppable. All right, so this is about 10 minutes after the wheel bug has bitten me. And as you can see, um, I have a pretty big welt on my forearm. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to squeeze this blood out. I would like to. Um, you know, so for those who don't like blood, that is a warning. But the reason why I'm saying that is because YouTube usually has a problem with me showing blood. And so therefore I have to blur it, but I am going to take my risk. Uh, I'm going to take a chance on this. So here we go. I'm going to squeeze it. Yep. Just like that. It's like uh, almost clear, like clearer. It's not like that deep, dark red that blood typically has, but yeah. So, I don't know, hopefully nothing happens. Hopefully they're okay with me showing this. <laughs> so that is going to conclude today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something from the video. If you come in contact with anybody or know of anybody who still holds on to the belief that all assassin bugs can give you Chagas disease. Please send them this video, please share it. Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed it, if you please leave a like and a comment, subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell icon to turn on post notifications. That way you're alerted every time that I post a new video. Follow me on Instagram at Kelvin Wiley and also on TikTok at Kelvin underscore Wiley. Check out my website, kelvinwiley.net and I will see you guys in the next video.